So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our speaker this morning, Teresa Valoton, and hopefully I pronounced that properly. She is co-president of Farm Fam, if I pronounced that correctly as well. So Teresa grew up on a mixed grain and beef farm in southern Manitoba and then headed off to further her education at university. In 2017, Teresa and her sister Karen co-founded Farm Fam to, pr to promote a forward-thinking, innovative, and technology-rich view of agriculture. Karen has since moved out, uh, sorry, on, but Teresa uses farmfam.com. Along, uh, so along with her social media presence to connect with a broad audience to showcase what it means to be an ag vocat, ag extender, and farm fan. She enjoys speaking about technology in agriculture and hosting coding camps for young people. Because she believes that innovation is what will foster gen-to-gen -gen connections and continue to evolve our farming operations, Teresa currently farms near Stockton, Manitoba. Please welcome Teresa Valaton. Thank you. So does AI and ag involve these gals? Because I sure used to think so, to your point. Um, this is 1989, and you see I'm rocking the 80s attire with the shorts, white socks, and jelly shoes. And this is a picture of the farmer I grew up on. Karen and I grew up on a mixed farm, but our main focus was grain. So we lived just down the road from my Uncle Dean, who was also on a mixed farm, but his main focus was beef. And so Karen, being the younger sister, often liked to be the adventure seeker and often encouraged us to hop on the quad and go down to Dean's and see what kind of mischief we could get into. And I... He was usually up for those adventures, but being the older sister, I wanted to check with my parents first and make sure we had our helmets on. So off we go down the road to Dean's one day, and we're exploring around his yard, looking at the pens, and we've seen the cows, and we've seen the calves, and there's no bulls. Now I'm going to say at this point in the story, let me interrupt and back up, at this point in his life, Dean is a bachelor. So he's got us wandering around his farm. We see the cows, we see the calves, we see no bulls, and we're farm girls, so we know how this works. So we say, where are the bulls? And he kind of just shrugs off, looks over his shoulder, says, ah, they're in Altona. Now, we're on a farm south of Morden, and we know that Altona's pretty far away, and so there's something more to the story here, but he kind of walked off and that was the end of the conversation. So we're left to go home and see what's the rest of the story. So needless to say, my dad was not too impressed with his brother and now a nine and a seven year old know the meaning of AI. But fast forward to today and the meaning of AI is totally different. When you talk to young people about what is AI and egg, this is what they're thinking. So us older crowd who remember the original AI and egg need to get up to speed on this AI and egg. At this point, when I go to a session, this is where I usually like to hear directly from the speaker, am I the target audience? Is this presentation for me? And so I know that you're here because you've read in the program, you've seen the summary, but at this point, this presentation is for you if you are just beginning to explore artificial intelligence and agriculture, or you're just looking at the intersection of AI and ag for the first time or in a new way. If you are really heavily invested in AI, you might be more advanced than what I'm gonna talk about in this presentation. Basically, I would like to address three things in this talk. First, what is artificial intelligence? So let's get a scope of what that looks like right now in agriculture. Secondly, how can that help my operation? In other words, why would I want to adopt AI? And then lastly, how do I get started? So there are two broad ways that we can look at AI and egg. The first is some of you in this room are thinking, give me the overall landscape. Tell me what's generally out there. And then you can distill down how that looks on your farm and your operation and all the specifics. 
There are also so probably some of you out there who are thinking, please don't overwhelm me. Give me a first next step. Give me one thing I can apply on my farm and um, let me go from there, get started with that. So if you're in the audience today, I'm going to try to accommodate both of those things by giving you a broad outline of some of the tech that's out there and then giving you some really specific examples so you might see how does that work in my operation. If you want to connect later or at any time, uh, reach me on farmfems.com or any social media platform if you have a specific question about your operation that you want to dive into more. So, first off, let's start with the basic question, what is AI? What is artificial intelligence? Has anyone here unlocked their phone using their image? Or used Waze? or Google Maps to navigate around, say Brandon? Did your car keep you in the lane and the right distance back from the car in front of you? Or did Alexa or Siri answer one of your questions this morning? Maybe they said what the weather forecast was because it's beautiful. If you answered yes to any of these questions, you have interacted with artificial intelligence. You see, AI is basically just asking a computer to do something that is done by human senses. It's asking computers to replicate human senses, only generally computers are better at it. They're faster and more efficient than people. So for instance, if you're looking at the pictures on the screen, I can recognize someone by looking at the shape of their face or the color of their hair, but AI is going to recognize me based on my pupils, the distance, size, and location of the pupils within my eye. And that same technology can be applied to cattle. So I can now use AI to look at hide patterns and that same facial recognition technology. You'll notice on the slide deck today that there'll be some um, citations or companies, links, names. I'm gonna try and give you very specific examples of places where you can start to look. This is a really dynamic space, so there are lots of companies involved in this space, but I'm gonna try and give you a specific one or two places to start your search. If you want to follow along right now, all the links will be live on farmfems.com. So if you see a specific technology that you're interested in, those links will be out there for you to follow. The next thing is now that we know what is AI, what can it do? So generally we use AI for two things, classifications or predictions. And what I mean by that is, so for example in classifications, right now there's a number of universities, U of W and Red River have a partnership, U of S is working on this, working on developing databases of images of plants so that they can build that repertoire of what does that plant look like so that it can be classified as either crop or weed, say wheat, not wheat. And then why would I want to use this if I were spraying? So you see the sprayer up there developed by Precision AI. That's a spot spraying um, technology that uses AI to identify crop, not crop, wheat, not wheat, and then spray in emerging crops. And so this is a really active space right now. There are companies like Tyrannus and Vario who are also invested in visually identifying plants. First in static environments, then they're moving out to trials in the environment, and then they're gonna work on speed trials for activities like spraying. So this is a really dynamic place where you'll see a lot of activity in the classification type um, questions. Then the next thing that AI can help us do is to make predictions. And so, for example, you'll see companies like Pestle are currently trying to examine very, 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 very large sets of geospatial and georeference data and then make very, 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 very specific forecasts sent to specific farmers concerned with specific fields and even specific parts of that field that are growing high value crops. So AI is generally used for classifications or predictions.
So what does that look like in egg? Some of my previous examples were generic, some were egg specific, and for the rest of this talk, all the examples will be very egg specific. We might recognize AI more in our personal lives. We might all be familiar with Waze or Alexa, and we might recognize that AI is helping us there. AI is equally as prevalent in the egg space, and there's so many possibilities. So we're gonna dive into those specifically right now. This is a dairy farm with a robotic milker. Carla comes from a Manitoba family farm and she talked to farm femmes about the transition process moving into robotic milking. So robots use AI to move through space at a specific time based on cues from sensors. And robots then collect information, in this case, about a variety of metrics about the cow and the milk and compare this information to baseline info to ensure animal health and milk quality. So robotic milking is really well established and that's why I wanted to use that as this first example. Many of us in the room will be familiar with robotic milking. Some of us may even operate robotic milking ourselves. Now this AI application has moved past the first stage and it's past being simply happy to accomplish the task of milking and collecting data. And now we're really working on robotic systems that are evolving to place more and more emphasis on cow comfort, increased speed, ensuring that we can automatically adjust rations and using color analysis in the milk to automatically segregate based on spectography. Here's another example of AI and egg. This is me standing by one of our semi-trucks in August. At egg days last year, so one year ago, I started the process of working on my class one license. And on July 31st, I took my test and I passed. So between January and July, there was a lot of studying and practicing and some grinding of gears. But there was also all the rest of the stuff that happened in my life. And for me, that means a lot of driving. And I'm sure the same is true for many of you. So. What I did was take the pre-trip inspection sheet with all of the check um, points that I needed to learn and using Amazon Web Services, a service called Polly, translated that into lifelike speech so that I could take that with me because I like to learn when I drive. And so that was a great opportunity for me to study while I drove. So that lifelike speech from Polly, saved as an MP3 file, moved with me to my phone, to my car, wherever I was traveling so I could study on the go. And right now, we have the ability to turn text into speech so that we can use that information hands-free. Everyone in this room has the ability to do that. And this afternoon at that Farm Femmes um, camp, our campers will be doing an activity just like that. So they'll be taking written directions for how to change a tire and turning those into lifelike speech and moving that into an MP3 file that they can take with them wherever they want to go. So you can do this right now with an operator manual, maybe a training manual for your employees, a safety guide, any text that you find on the internet that you want to change into lifelike speech, AI can help you do that. And then that can go with you wherever you want. So I spend a lot of driving. This was definitely a help in me passing that pre-trip inspection. The next example of AI and agriculture comes to us from Ontario. This is a company called, this is Potato Field and Harvest right here, but the company is called Greentronics. And they're based in Ontario and they have a system called Right Trace, which tracks potatoes or carrots or onions or sugar beets as they're harvested, but then transferred onto the truck, then transferred onto the conveyor, then transferred into the shed and into the pile. So now I can have a 3D visualization of the piles in my shed and know exactly where the potatoes came from, from each part of the pile, I can trace it right back to which part of the field. So if we look at the production chain, what's the value in this? The value is that suppose I send a load to McCain and it gets rejected because it doesn't meet the quality standards. I want to make sure that I can assure them that the next load that I send them is coming from a different part of the pile, which means it's coming from a different part of the field, and that means it's agronomically a different product. 
So if I can assure them of that, they'll be willing to take my next loan. And then if I turn and look backward and look at my own production practices, I want to look at the seeding conditions, the field conditions, the harvest conditions, the weather associated with that particular field. And I want to really dive into what happened that caused that quality issue because I want to obviously fix that if you, issue if it's under my control. If it's a factor that I could control, then I want to fix that so it doesn't happen again. And having a right trace system that gives me the 3D image allows me to trace it right from the pile back through harvest. So AI allowed me to pull all that information together and aggregate it in a visual way, and then I can make a decision as to my next action. Okay, here we go. What does AI in ag look like? It looks like sensors. A lot, a lot, a lot of sensors. This whole presentation could seriously have just been about sensors. But sensors are changing ag as we speak. If you can detect it with a sensor, you have that data at your fingertips. And now we can use AI to harness that data, that vast amount of data, to turn it into something that we can use as information and make decisions from. So the availability and cost of sensors has changed so significantly in recent years and it will continue to change as farmers continue to think of new and innovative, innovative ways to use those sensors. In other words, we're driving the change in this space and there's a lot of growth here. So some of the movers and shakers, things we should be paying attention to and concepts that are out there. Amber Agriculture brought us the wireless kernel sensor that we can just toss in our grain no matter where it is. And their tagline is bins or bags or barges. So it can track temperature, relative humidity and moisture, but also historical location. And this has implications for grain storage, but also for traceability and security. So imagine the power of being able to take your old bins and make them high tech just by tossing in wireless kernel sensors as you auger your grain into the bin. Terolytic brings us the in-ground soil probe sensors. So those can report on eight different metrics at three different depths. And those metrics include things like moisture, salinity, and pH, and temperature, but also NPK. So this sensor data is available in their um, dashboard, but also it can integrate into a dashboard that you might already be using. So this means that we have access to integrated data about plant available nutrients and moisture throughout the entire growing season. Then we want to take our sensors and use them automatically. So now our, this is where artificial intelligence shines. We can take this information from the multitude of sensors that we have and connect it to current actions automatically from planting through harvest. On the left, you will see that AI can help us adjust planting depth based on soil moisture. So Dawn manufactures active depth control, which allows you to build a moisture prescription to automatically adjust your planting depth on the go. And then tech like AFS Harvest Command helps you to optimize combine efficiency based on your harvesting priority, be that grain quality or performance or throughput. So this is what an expert or experienced combine driver does manually right now. But we know that not all of our combine operators are experts. So AI could help that decision making by automatically adjusting the parameters of the threshing system. So this means that as conditions change throughout the day, the combine is automatically changing its settings based on that harvesting priority that you selected. And then one more slide about sensors, because it could have been all about sensors. Um, for those of you with poultry or hog barns, FarmBeat monitors 20 environmental parameters, and it can integrate with existing systems to automatically adjust based on that information collected from sensors. So for instance, it will automatically adjust your temperature or can uh, alert you if your ammonia level in your hog barn gets too high. So in other words, all of those sensors are collecting that data and then artificial intelligence is being used to either automatically take an action or to alert you 
so that you can take an action once a certain threshold has been reached. And then at this show, there's a highlight of innovation, and one of the innovations that you'll see is the automatic adjustment of granular fertilizer based on wind. The Argus Twin Sensor is mounted in a raised position so it can read, uh, gets a clear reading, and then the control software determines whether the spreading system needs to make an adjustment based on the wind speed so it can compensate for the spread pattern distortion based on wind. Now, I'll be the first to acknowledge that all of these technologies come with a cost. But they're possible, and they're possible right now. So everything that I've shown is available on the market right now, which means that by the time my girls are farming, this level of automation will be commonplace. And then the last example about current AI and egg. Many of us in this room are primary producers, but we also wear other hats. In other words, we're members of boards or organizations. So sentiment analysis for egg companies or organizations is critical in monitoring public opinion. Engaging interest on a topic in proactively creating a brand image or responding to negative experiences. So for instance, the Canadian canola growers tweet mentions the word frustrating in relation to the Ag Minister's meeting. So if I'm the Canadian canola growers, I now want to monitor the response to that tweet and see what the sentiment is, how are people responding to that. But I can't do that manually. In other words, there's not a table full of humans scouring all possible social, social media feeds to try and understand what the response is. Instead, this is where AI comes in. AI can help an organization analyze the sentiment and decide on what their response should be in a nimble fashion. Sentiment analysis uses keywords to search for trends and identify the mood of the audience. So not just the keywords, but also the mood and what does that mean. Then the company can differentiate between several angry tweets and a growing trend, and organizations can be nimble and strategic in their response. Hashtags are also another way that AI can help aggregate a large number of seemingly unrelated things. So you'll see the Ag Days co-chair is up there. There's many of us in this room who've been using the hashtag Ag Days 20, and we may seem unrelated. In other words, I'm using the hashtag as is Fent, as is MNP. What do myself and Fent and MNP all have in common? Well, we're all connected by Ag Days. So if I'm an Ag Days organizer, I want to use AI to pull together those seemingly unrelated entities and analyze how my tag's being used. And then in a similar fashion, you'll see the last tweet by Richardson uses the hashtag, your best begins here. So if this tag really takes off, their marketing team is going to need to look at that use of that tag as far as by whom, how frequently, and when in order to plan their events and their marketing strategy. In each of these examples, AI is helping the organization see how they're doing on social media. So now we shift. This is the second part of the presentation that I talked about. The real question is, how can AI positively impact my operation? Farming is a business with razor-fine margins, so tech is making the difference between successful and viable farming operations. We all know that humans are prone to memory loss and selective memory and emotions, none of which help our business-making decisions. This means we buy land above value, we sell at market lows, and we forget the timing or the compounding factors that impacted our disease pressures. Whatever that looks like on your operations, humans can be flawed decision makers. Luckily, if we employ technology to help us, not to replace us, but to help us make those decisions that impact our productivity and profitability, we will ultimately have a more sustainable operation. And for me, 
To be sustainable means three things. It means we're being sustainable environmentally, financially, and socially. At Farm Fems, we talk a lot about gen to gen because my sister and I are both raising the next generation of potential future farmers. And the work that we do collectively right now is the work that will positively impact the operation that they might wish to be a part of. So our work is setting them up in an environment that's rich to produce crops and livestock, in a financial stable operation, and in a society where rural life is viable because rural services are available. In other words, we're working to make farming sustainable environmentally, financially, and socially, and if we do these things, we'll have a successful operation. So this is the point where AI comes into that success in a really concrete way. If we define a successful operation as being productive and profitable and sustainable, then AI can help us drive that in three ways. Okay, it's a lot of threes. I know, here they come. AI can help us in these three ways, by helping us solve problems, helping us make better decisions, and creating gen-to-gen -gen opportunities. AI will help us solve problems with new, different, and creative thinking. Helping us make decisions means that we can enhance our practices together, collectively in this room, and at scale, if we harness the technology that we have to make those better decisions with the vast amount of information that we now have available to us more than ever before. And then thirdly, AI can help us create gen-to-gen -gen opportunities. We are motivated to do the work, and I hope you are motivated to do the work of adopting artificial intelligence, and it is work, absolutely, to make these better decisions because we want to create a space in ag where our kids have both the desire and the opportunity to participate. So, I'm big on examples. Here they come. If we have this lens, and we're now looking at the rest of the examples that we talk about through the lens of either helping our farm be solving problems, be more um, productive in our decision making, or fostering gen to gen connections, what does that look like? Here's a fun one to get us started because I certainly acknowledge that those things overlap and go together. So we'll do an overlapping example and then we'll look at um, specific amp examples of each of those three. But this example is about a, a robotic cattle herder that's being used in Nebraska at a processing plant. And it's being used to solve the problem of safety, but it's also being used to foster gen-to-gen -gen connection. If you watch this video, it's a minute long, it's not a big time investment, but it's a great video. The young operator of the controller is, he is all in. He is into this robot. He's having fun. And um, it's serving a purpose and also making his job more interesting. So we want to bring those, those things together. What does that look like specifically? We're going to go through three examples, one for each of those areas. The first one is using AI to solve problems. In the past six months, I've had friends who have lost quads and trucks to theft. I'm sure that if we went around this room, we could find many of us who have first-hand experience with fuel theft, which is in fact one of the reasons why my parents installed their security camera system. Now, I am not saying that AI is going to solve rural crime, but I am saying it can be a tool to help us protect our remote yards and bin sites. And it also acts as one of the activities, as the basis for the activity this afternoon. So our camp participants this afternoon will be working on catching a fuel thief using image recognition. But in this picture, you can see me filling up my Explorer because I drive a lot. And you'll notice that this photo has been analyzed. There we go. And image recognition and text recognition was able to pull out my, accurately pull out my license plate number. It can also look for any other text in that image that is occurring, so that could include logos or decals as well. But when cameras first came on the market, and particularly when video first became uh, widely available, there was no great way to sort or filter or process any of that vast amount of information. So basically what we did was we waited till something happened, and then we looked back through reels and reels and reels of information until we found the incident. However, 
it's now possible to set up pings or alerts so that when a certain event occurs, you could be notified. So for instance, you'd be notified if this fuel tank user didn't match one of the authorized users in your operation. So on our farm, there are five people who are authorized to take fuel anytime. Once I have those five people in my system, AI can recognize them to whatever degree of confidence I want. And then an unauthorized user would result in a ping to me. Then I get to decide what to do with that information. So maybe it's call the RCMP. Maybe it's text my brother-in-law and tell him I can see what he's doing. Either way, I get to make the decision. And this helped me solve the problem of too much video. Next, I want to talk a little bit about using AI to make decisions. The bottom line is that AI can help us in our operation to make better business decisions based on facts and not emotions. So to preview this before we get into the meat of this slide, in a recent article, John Deere talked about their strategy for the next two years being focused on data-driven ag tech and boosting service. In other words, John Deere is saying we don't need to develop a bunch of new tech, but instead we really need to help farmers adopt the tech that's already out there. And a recent article by Christian Hebert, and he's going to be speaking in this room at 1030, talks about farmers needing to utilize that data that they already have before they work on acquiring more data. So this is totally in line with the John Deere strategy. So all of this to say, take heart. It's not easy to adapt, adopt new things, but if we are motivated by the fact that these better decisions can help our business, then we can see the value of investing time and energy into them. So here we go. These images come out of John Deere Operations Center, which is hence the little preview about their strategy. So on the screen, you'll see three images of that same field. These are maps coming out of Operations Center, and on the left, you'll see where the wheat was seeded. As you note, this field includes a number of bluffs of trees. There's an irregular uh, perimeter where there's a valley on one side. There's a small spot that's sort of secluded from the rest by a driveway. And actually, this is where technology like sectional control really shines. It does its best work on and has the best impact on fields that are not large and square. But that's an aside. Okay, back to the second part in there, second part in the middle is showing the application of PGR plant growth regulator, except for the control strip, which is at the top towards the left. And there's a pattern of red in the third picture. The third picture is showing the yield map, and that pattern of red corresponds with that control strip. So now we have an actual data trail that can quantify accurately the impact of that PGR. Now I want to layer on another set of information. This is a timeline visualization to capture all the activities on this field and integrated into that are scouting reports from FarmDog. So FarmDog is a scouting app that syncs into Operation Center to integrate both the photos that you took when you were ground scouting. So you were ground truthing, how did this PGR impact the field? You still go out and measure, you take those photos, you can integrate those scouting reports right into your app and into your timeline, as well as the text reports, text scouting reports that you do. And that just provides another layer of data for you to look at to make decisions. At this point, someone in the room is sitting here thinking, I have all this information already, and it's here, right? I'm already collecting all this information in my head which might be true, but that goes back to two things that FarmFems talks about a lot. Technology can be used to help us, not replace us, but help us make better decisions because humans are flawed decision makers, right? We're subject to emotions and memory loss and all of those other things. And then secondly, you cannot support gen-to-gen -gen egg and a gen-to-gen -gen vision for your farm if all the information is stored in one person's brain. It is really difficult to engage other people. Frankly, it's almost impossible to engage other people in meaningful ways 
where they feel like they have a meaningful contribution when all the information is stored in one person's brain. So by putting it into a platform that numerous people can look at, you improve your decision-making process, you can look at all that data together and work on that uh, best decision possible for your operation. And then the last, the third area, is using AI to foster gen-to-gen -gen opportunities. Our kids, my girls, are only going to want to come back to the farm if it's interesting and financially sound. So what we invest in today in terms of time and energy and effort and money directly impacts if our farm is interesting and financially sound. And thus, it impacts if our kids have a legitimate operation to come back to, or even if they want to be involved in ag at all. So I have an interest in drones. I have my basic license. I've been flying for a few years. And I've really found that to be a great way to pull in my nephews, my daughters. And throughout this presentation, and at the beginning of this presentation, you saw some video footage that came from that hobby. So it's a great hobby. But to be clear, it's more than just for fun. There are a number of drone applications designed specifically to help farmers make decisions based on getting information from a new perspective. AI in drone spraying needs to be able to take into account the field pattern and any obstacles, as well as variable factors like wind speed. So our farm signed up to be a test site for water trials for an unmanned aerial vehicle. We did this because it's interesting to us but also because it's an area with great potential for growth. So we and our next gen are gonna get the opportunity to see this new kind of drone in action. And we might be inspired to pursue that technology, whether it's the physical drone itself, whether it's the studying of the engineering or the environmental impact on more precise spraying or developing the code that allows it to fly and return and refill automatically. But even if we don't pursue any of that technology, we've shown a willingness and an openness to try new things and new ideas. In other words, you might start using AI on your farm for fun and then work your way up to using it for profitability. But even if you're using it just for fun, you are really setting up your operation to be an engaging place for the next generation and in general for different family members to showcase their skills and contribute in meaningful ways. So this past year, we were able to use our drone imagery in two separate instances on two separate canola fields to identify things more um, earlier and more easily than we would have by ground scouting alone. But then we also used those scenic images to create a YouTube channel that's full of fun videos. And then we spent way more time than we should watching videos and talking about other people's crops and equipment, but also their photography techniques and their video uh, production as well. So it was a great way to bring both the egg side and the fun side together. So what else could the future hold? In the interest of time, I'm going to skip this slide. But I will just say, if you want to talk to me uh, at all about virtual reality, augmented reality, blockchain, or hands-free communications, please come see me. Reach out to Farm Femmes. Be happy to talk about any of those things. We're going to skip to, this sounds like change. That makes us all uncomfortable. Why do I want to do this again? Two reasons. Gen-to-gen -gen connections on your farm. You cannot have a family farm if you don't work on the family and if you don't work on the farm. You have to work on both of those parts. And AI and tech help us do that. Ag needs people with more diverse skill sets than ever before. Those wider skill sets are needed to make our operations successful. So if farms are going to continue to attract the best and the brightest talent and continue to be multi-generational, they need to harness tech to make that happen, to make better decisions by analyzing the information that we have. So there are two main ways for you to get started. This is the third part of what I said I was going to talk about. How do you start? There's two main ways. First, you can be that main driver of change. You can learn about the AI yourself, or you can seek out and be open to other people and be accepting of them bringing that into your operation. 
What I mean is you can be the primary learner, you're driving change, you're pushing your operation forward with innovative thinking and adopting. Or you can step out of the way and say, hey, I need help. I don't know it all or nor do I want to know it all. This is not my thing, but I am welcoming you into my operation to help me because I see that's going to benefit my operation. So for some of you, that means your 24-year-old daughter. For some of you, that means your 17-year-old grandson. Whoever that is in your operation, by showing them that you value their skill sets, you help diversify your operation and make better decisions. So, lastly, how do you get started? At the very beginning of this session, we talked about some people today wanting to see the overall landscape of AI and ag, while other people really wanted a specific, like, how can I start? Give me the first next step. Hopefully, we touched a bit on both of those things, but no matter which way you look at AI and ag, the bottom line is this. My main message is this. Do something. It is not enough to stand still. It's doing nothing is not an option. If it were, we'd all be sitting here with flip phones, or better yet, back to those girls at the beginning of the presentation in 1989 who thought they were super cool because their parents had a bag phone. Some of you remember that. Okay, that's not good enough, right? I don't want to be with a bag phone anymore. And the same thing is true in our operation. That gap gets too big if a generation doesn't do anything to move their operation forward in tech. So just like none of us here want to have the bag phone, none of us want to be stagnant in our tech and our egg operation either. We want to set our next gen up for success by taking small steps, incremental steps forward. It doesn't have to be a giant leap, but we can't stand still. So the great news is this session is at the very beginning of egg days. You have almost three full days to go and explore the show with a theme of innovation, and you can look around and see what your first next step might be. Or you can feel free to reach out to me after this presentation. Whatever way it is, if you walk away with nothing else, the message is do something. We build our collective future in ag when each of us do the hard work of advancing our family farms. Um, having said that, before I take questions, I want to just take this opportunity to say a word about my sister, Karen. She is not here today for a great reason. She's accepted a position with AWS, so that's Amazon Web Services, as head of worldwide solutions for architecture in agriculture. This is a global position, which means she'll work closely with ag technologists who are shaping what's possible today and in the future. So while I'm Sad that she's not here with me. I am very proud of her and that what this opportunity brings. And with that, I'll be happy to field questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, for the sake of time, I'll take one question. And I know there's some students from ACC here, so I'm looking for you guys, the technology people. If you have a question, if not, well, I'll turn it to whoever in the crowd. Anyone? Where's your hand? I can't see. It's a little dark from down here. Nobody? Well, I guess then you covered the topic perfectly. Okay. Let's give a good hand of applause here. Thank you very much for your presentation and time here this morning. Thank you.